hello guys welcome to the channel in this video we are going to have a look at yet another agentic tool called as ls ls seems to be one of the tool which is gaining popularity steadily as it is claiming to be fully autonomous general purpose ai agentic software the project aims to create a standalone artificial intelligence assistant similar to jarvis we already have covered jarvis on the channel and it is based on the open source LLMs. LS achieves this goal by building a text computer that uses a large language model as its core processor. Currently, LS demonstrates proficiency in range of tasks, including thematic research, coding, system management, literature review, and complex hybrid tasks that go beyond these basic capabilities. So in other words, LS is similar to what a lot of other agentic software out there are. So it is yet just another, another alternative looks good so in this video we are going to install it locally and then we will play around with it in this video i'm just going to go with open ai's model but in the next and coming videos i will also be covering it with open source model because in this video i just wanted to give you the flavor of this ls as how it looks like how it works out so because we'll be using open ai so you would need to go to platform.openai.com and you would need to grab your open ai's key if you this is the first time you are creating your account there you will be getting some sort of credit i'm not sure how much they're offering these days is it five dollars or ten dollars previously it was ten us dollars so i'm not sure what exactly because someone reported that it is now five dollars so please correct me in the comments if you know the exact dollar figure they are offering as a credit for first uh, time um user so but if you are um, the habitual um, criminal like me who are using OpenAI for a long time, then I think you would just need to pay them some money to get the API key. Anyway, so let's go and start um, start installing this LS. But before that, let me give a huge shout out to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you are looking to rent a GPU, on affordable prices i will drop the link to their website in video description plus i'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50 percent discount on a range of gpus this is the vm i'm going to use which is ubuntu 22.04 and this is my gpu card nvidia rtx a6000 with 48 gp of vram it is highly recommended to install conda and i will be creating a Conda virtual environment to keep everything separate from my local system and I am just calling it LS. So let's wait for it to get installed and that is done. It is activated too. Let's git clone the repo of LS and I will drop the link to it in video description and I am into that LS one. Let's clear the screen. Let's install all the requirements which are pip install e. So let me do that. It is going to take a bit of a time, so let's wait for it to finish. All the prerequisites are done. Now let me clear the screen. And now in order to run the ls, just run this command and make sure that you have Chrome browser installed because that is a browser which goes very nicely with this one. I haven't checked it out with other browsers, so and in their repo too, they highly recommend Chrome. So, and I would suggest that just do as they say because these agentic software are a bit sensitive. Okay, so we are just launching this LS web and the model which we are using is OpenAI's GPT-40. So let me run it. And as soon as I have launched it, it is asking me uh, to enter my OpenAI key. So let me paste it. I'm not sure if it would display or not. So let me pause the video and paste the key. So as I was suspecting, it indeed displayed the key. So I have just pressed enter a few times to um, hide it from the screen. Anyway, so you can see that everything has started. And now we can access it on our local host in the browser at port 5000. So let's go to our browser here and then just open that 5000 port on local host. And this is what we get when we open the chat interface of Alice here. And then you can just click on this plus sign to create a new chat or you can chat here. So maybe you see it's a new chat. I'm just clicking here. I'll say, and I think I can also rename it or delete it. So I'll just delete it. Click here again. Bit slow, but anyway, 
let's see yeah it's loaded now so i'm just going to ask it what is happiness and then let's wait for it there you go so it is using that open air gpt4 to chat with it now the way it has it works is quite interesting and this is the time to just discuss few of the features of this so it has in-depth research capabilities as you can see it talks very well and it also can uh, read the and analyze articles and scholarly work we will check it out shortly it has advanced automation in programming and script execution so right now when you install ls like this it has a full control on your system which you can control of course by configuring it but it really functions as comprehensive coder and an efficient system management tool it has voice interaction support as you can see here we can also check it out and then um, you can also use the vision models with it so we might also check it out here so let me see if out of the box it can do that so i'm ask, going to ask it about my local system can you uh, list the process running on port 5000 on this machine let's see if it can do that Okay, so it is using some of the proxy, but it didn't do anything after that in the chat window. No, actually it did. I was, I had to be patient. For some reason it is running very slow, but anyway, you see, it is telling me that on port 5000 on this machine, this is the process ID which is running. And then actually it is the same LS which we ran earlier. And then it has, uh, it is saying that it, there is a, it has this process, the same PID or process ID. It is, it has this file descriptor open. It has, then we have another process ID, which it is talking to. Hmm, interesting, the Chrome one, because it also opened the Chrome. So it's also spawned a child process, which it is telling us. Okay. Can you create a Python program to um plot uh maybe i'll just say to draw an ascii art thing love let's say if it can write a python program to draw that let's wait for it to come back and there you go so it has drawn that love does it look like a love to me but still it is doing something which is correct now let's try out a, a complex prompt unfortunately it doesn't show it here uh, where should i show you maybe i will paste it in a text file and show you as what or maybe i'll just paste it here so here i'm asking it deploy a straightforward website on this machine okay there you go sorry sorry okay so this deploy a straightforward website on this machine using the flask framework ensure accessibility at 000 and then i have given it the whole information at what exactly this website should be doing and then i'm also asking it to iterate to produce more complex function if you don't see any images on the page please check whether the images folder of the website is different from images let's see what it does here can it do it or no wow look at that so it has created a flask application it has created the html template and then it has set up the directory it has run the flask application copy images access the website wow good stuff and there you go you see it has deployed the flask application let me make it slightly bigger so that you would be able to see it properly okay so if i scroll down again here you see it says that Last application has been successfully deployed and the images have been copied to the docker container and we can access it here so let me click there you go can't see the images but it's because we didn't have any images but still you see the website is running i mean simply out of this world okay so and i have closed it i, I shouldn't have it anyway so if i just open the terminal again and then all i need to do is to just access it and you see it is also giving you all the logs here so let me access it again on the local port 5000 next up i am asking it to find a video on youtube by fahad mirza about graph rag and give me its full title let's see and by the way these are all api calls so this could be quite expensive too towards the end of the 
video i'm going to check my open ai account and i will let you know how much um it set me back so let's wait for this youtube video researcher to come back so it seems that behind the scene it is using all of these tools and function calls to do all of the grunt work and there you go you see i just did a video yesterday and today and look look at that amazing really really good stuff so it has found out most of my videos that is great and now like you can ask it as many things as you want um you can ask it i am in sydney uh, where should i go and find some happiness tonight let's see sydney opera house you see so it will do everything you want it to do Let's see if it can um, talk with the images. I'm not sure how to put an image here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag and drop the image from my local folder. Or you know what? I'm just going to click on this camera icon here. And then I'm just going to select one of the images. Maybe I'll just go with this one. Hmm, that's it. Let's see. I'm going to... There you go. <laughs> it is saying what a beautiful image. So it is multimodal and i'll just say uh, okay so it already told me that it could be possibly australian outback because of kangaroos um which part of australia do you reckon let's see if it knows about it or not hmm, that's very good western south it has covered all of them but specific territories and specific areas in few of the states that is good okay let's see if it can um you know I, it can detect my mic i'm in the vm through thin links i'm not sure if it would be able to detect my local mic or not but no harm in trying so let me click here i'm just going to say allow hello what is the weather today in sydney So I just stopped the audio here. It is saying that um, I see that you have uploaded an audio. Yes, transcribe and answer the question in audio. Let's see. So it is first transcribing the audio, which is good. Let's wait for it. So as I was suspecting, I think my audio didn't go through on my thin link on my virtual machine. But anyway, we already can see that it can transcribe the audio. It can deal with images. It can deal with coding, with general English comprehension, online web search, and in just a chat window. So that's what makes it really good. So I really like the tool. Um, I think one of the good tools out there, uh, which we can use easily. So. In the next video, I will be covering its integration with local models for whatever available. So stay tuned. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.